it's a symbol of freedom and hope that inspires people around the world. And now it's here in Ashtabula County. This is the Freedom Schooner Amistad. It's a wooden replica of the 19th century cargo schooner that was at the center of the Amistad slave revolt incident of 1839. The incident brought races together for a common cause and continues to inspire the ideals of perseverance, justice, and equality. Amistad means friendship. The schooner itself serves as an icon to freedom. The Amistad has visited ports all along the East Coast and Gulf of Mexico and in 2003 is making its first Great Lakes tour, including a stop right here at the port of Ashtabula. Ashtabula County was chosen as a stop on this tour due to its rich underground railroad, congregationalist, pioneer and abolitionist history and our local commitment to the Amistad project. As you can see, dozens of volunteers, such as these Ashtabula City firefighters, have put in countless hours beautifying the harbor district in preparation for the Amistad's visit. And it all came together Friday morning as citizens from all walks of Ashtabula County turned out to watch the Lakeside High School marching band kick off the Amistad Ashtabula celebration. Let's go now to the opening ceremonies of the Amistad celebration. Thank you for this schooner, for all of its importance to us and all that it has brought about already. And so as we cut the ribbon this day, we ask your blessing upon all who have participated and all who will participate, that many may learn the story of freedom with justice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today I would like to present a key to the city. John Daly. And this says, the city of Ashtabula, Ohio, proudly presents its key to the city, to Amistad America. In recognition of the Freedom Schooner Amistad's historic visit, September 5th, 6th, 7th, 2003. Welcome. November of 1863, I was asked to give an address at Gettysburg in remembrance of those that had given their lives here. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we're engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so that conceived and so dedicated under God shall be born of freedom that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. I'm very pleased to be part of the celebration of freedom and justice today. And on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we have a proclamation uh, that we would like to read uh, on this commemorative day. We are commending the Freedom Schooner Amistad on its three-day stop on September 6th, 6th, and 7th in the Ashtabula Harbor. Whereas Amistad America is a national nonprofit educational organization whose mission is to promote reconciliation and harmony among races through the ownership and operation of this Freedom Schooner Amistad. In 1839, 53 Africans were illegally taken against their will for slavery purposes and placed aboard the coastal cargo schooner La Amistad, during which time a successful revolt ensued which led to the capture and jailing of these would-be slaves on charges of murder and mutiny. These people who risked their lives and endured many sacrifices to complete their mission of freedom are recognized as an important milestone in the abolitionist movement which led to the first real victory of human rights before the United States Supreme Court for persons of African descent. Today, this recognition has been granted and the Freedom Schooner Amistad will travel to the Asheville County Harbor in order to share its rich historical heritage with the tours the schooner's visit will provide. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Asheville County Commissioners that we hereby commend this organization, Amistad America, for providing this Freedom Schooner here in Ashtabula County and providing us the opportunity to celebrate this historical event during this weekend. And it's signed by myself, Deborah Newcomb, President of the Board, Robert Boggs, and Joe Morosky. 
And again, uh, we welcome you here and appreciate this educational opportunity for the citizens of our county. When Amistad Ashtabula celebration continues, we'll talk to the man who's the new captain of the ship. Sweet 224, Ashtabula County's premier dial-up internet provider has the lowest prices on broadband internet. ADSL starts at $29.95 per month and is available in Ashtabula, Austinburg, Geneva, Rock Creek, North Kingsville, Dorset, Madison, and Perry. In Conneaut, broadband prices start at $25. Get off that dial-up. Call Sweet 224 today. Ashtabula County. What a wonderful place to live. This message was brought to you by Orwell Cable TV. What's it like to sail around the world on a floating piece of history? We talk with the Amistad Captain John Dealey about his ship and what the Freedom Schooner Amistad's mission means to him. This is a Baltimore Clipper. Uh, uh, after the original La Amistad from the Amistad incident of 1839, and she was built at Mystic Seaport Museum in Mystic, Connecticut, over the course of about uh, four years. Two years of fundraising, and then two years of construction. Uh, she's designed to carry crew and not cargo, like the original Amistad was. I have folks from Detroit, from Toledo, from Connecticut, from Virginia. Uh, my chief mate who joins the ship tomorrow is originally from the Marshall Islands. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, and so they're from all over. Uh, of the, all of the traditional vessels that are sailing in the country today, this is the one that has the mission that is uh, most deeply personal to me. Uh, sailing around the world and, and uh, talking about uh, race issues and racism issues and helping people understand that everybody is the same under the color of their skin is, is uh, something that I'm deeply passionate about. Also, this is a uh, Baltimore Clipper, and she's regarded as one of the fastest and most maneuverable sailing vessels in the country today. So as a sailor, it appeals to me tremendously as well. You know, I did a lot of reading about uh, anthropology, and, and uh, I understand that, uh, that race is a creation of culture and not science, that genetics, we are, you know, prove that we're all related. Uh, and, uh, you know, I also knew from growing up just by watching people around me that attitude and not color separates you. And so I, I'm astounded uh, at the way people are still treated just on the basis of color alone. Uh, so for me, it's just, it's just something that, uh, that uh, stirs me sometimes to the point of anger whenever I'm faced with that sort of stuff. And having an opportunity to strike back and... and uh, in a professional way, in a personal way, in an uh, articulate way is, is uh, very important to me. I think every time I, I speak with somebody I, I can see uh, more understanding. We have some folks who come just to take a look at the boat and they don't really care about the mission. Some folks come and they, the boat is simply a vehicle for the mission and it really varies widely. The Amistad is a representation of a, of a traveling battlefield for human rights and freedom. Uh, it is it's, it's extremely important. It's kind of like taking a Civil War battlefield and bringing it to your, to your front door. And everybody should come in and talk with the crew and look at our exhibit and learn about the, the Amistad incident because there were 53 warriors who fought a battle um, in 1839 and the, uh, the effects of that are still rippling out today. There's still a long way to go. So the more people who come, then the easier it will be for us in the future. Just looking at this ship instills a sense of wonder in both young and old. When we come back, we'll go on board the Amistad and be a part 
of this piece of American history. Hello, you're, you're watching, watching Ashabila County News Net. Four hundred and twenty thousand of our fellow citizens died. Each year. I'm sure you're aware that the Surgeon General and the American Medical Association estimate that cigarettes kill over four hundred thousand smokers every year. Cigarettes are the single most dangerous consumer product ever sold. He's your pet, your playmate, and your very best friend. So how do you honor his memory when he's gone away? Remember Me Pet Monuments are the perfect way to pay tribute to your beloved pets. Made of a sturdy weatherproof polystyrene, these personalized monuments add a touch of elegance to any home or garden. Lightweight and portable, they're the perfect answer for city or even apartment dwellers. Keep the spirit of your treasured pet alive with a Remember Me personalized monument. The Amistad offers an important message for all individuals about our collective history and continuing struggle for equality and human rights. The Amistad's educational director took us on a tour of the vessel and gave us some of the history of the ship. Um, this would be the stern of our vessel here. Uh, our vessel is three years old. It was launched in March of 2000. Uh, and its home port is New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, we've traveled, we've been in the Great Lakes since May and uh, recently came from Sandusky and will be heading to Buffalo, um, Buffalo, New York at the end of our stint here in Ashtabula. Uh, this, we have three major parts in, underneath the deck and this would be the aft cabin, includes officer's quarters, captain's quarters. So we have captain, first mate, second mate, chef uh, reside down here, um, as well as our nav station, nav table. Uh, in the front, we call that the forecastle or the forecastle, and that's where nine crew members have bunks and kind of a walk-in closet space at nine, so it's not spacious, but uh, it's all you really need when you're on the ship. And then our main cargo hold is actually where the tour, um, a normal public tour, people go down below uh, and see kind of artifacts from the Amazon incident, pictures, uh, manifolds, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a major things, a couple different things about this ship than the original would have been our lot because it's a Coast Guard is much more involved today than it was, you know, 180 years ago. Um, they mandate how high you ride off the water, um, which is nice for us because we ride four feet higher than an original, you know, an older uh, Baltimore Clipper would have. We have much more headspace. Our cargo hold is seven feet high, whereas the captives would have actually been kept at four feet. Um, so that's nice, as well as we have engines to get into small spaces like this and to keep our schedule. Uh, and our engine room takes up 10 feet, so we're actually 10 feet longer at 129 feet rather than 119 or so. Um, and then of course, we have the modern conveniences of GPS, radar, uh, satellite telephone mounted on the mast. But other than that, it is a true uh, recreation as possible to the original. Um, these are some of my favorite things on the deck. They're light prisms. Yeah, I saw that. Of course, we have electricity today, but back then they would have tried to gather as much natural light as possible and then scatter it around to so be able to see it down below as well. But what I want you to do is... I'm getting rid of all the best um, fruit. Um, you got to face the ladder and come down. Otherwise, head hurts. Uh, along this wall, we have pictures of the original captives that were they were sketched in the court proceedings back in 1840 and 1841. Um, we have about 20 of the 36 or so that were still living at the trial time, uh, including some of the children. So, uh, kind of be able to see the faces of the people that um, went through the Amistad incident. Uh, we have a picture of the original Amistad, which we don't have the blueprints for, but we do have a picture and that was um, also used uh, to help us reproduce this version of the Amistad. Um, our hero is Singbank P.A. Here we have a portrait of him. He's the leader in the revolts, kind of the leader amongst the captives. And then our, we have our uh, silhouettes of how the captives would have been kept in in the cargo hold in this area. 
The man formerly at the helm of the freedom schooner Amistad has bid his shipmates a fond farewell. William Bill Pinckney officially retired as master during the 2003 Amistad Great Lakes Friendship Tour. Captain Pinckney joined Amistad America as a member of the Board of Trustees in 1996, and in 2000 he became the first master of the schooner. Captain Pinckney made history in 1990 as the first black man and only the fourth American to make a solo circumnavigation of the earth under sail via the Southern Ocean Route around Cape Horn. Best of luck, Captain Pinckney. Now, what does it take to feed a hungry crew at sea? ACN Sandra Holloway caught up with Amistad's man with the golden pan. Amistad Ashtabula celebration continues right after this. Hi, we're the crew of the Amistad, and you're watching ACN. Imagine. Imagine. A lifetime of discovery that begins in your own backyard. At Kent State University's regional campuses, you'll discover the education and training you need to develop the skills and confidence to succeed. Imagine higher education in your own community to help you reach for a higher standard of success. Kent State University. Call or visit us on the web. Have you ever taught the deaf to sign? Have you ever taken Boy Scouts to summer camp? Have you ever given a disabled man a job? When you give to the United Way of Ashtabula County, you do all this and more. There's nothing like a good meal after a hard day's work, and no one knows that better than the crew of the schooner Amistad. ACN reporter Sandra Holloway talks with the executive chef of the ship, Chef James Peterson, and he talks about feeding those ravenous appetites. How long have you been with the Amistad? Um, I started in uh, 1997 with the original construction of the boat, the planning of the galley, I designed it, and uh, that was in 1997, and I've been here ever since. Right. Now, what special challenges do you face trying to uh, prepare meals for the crew and keeping everybody with a uh, sturdy stomach while they're out there on the water? Well, the challenges are pretty much the same. If you had a family, there those challenges that go along with... Uh, I grew up in a family of seven kids, and we were fighting over a pork chop. You know what I mean? So. It's, it's, a, it's the same. We have one big family. Some people have different needs. Some people will eat anything that moves. Some people were very picky. Um, so it's up to me to find a way to coordinate that. How do you go about stocking enough uh, food and stuff for, for your travels? Well, we, we can um, go 10 to 12 days with fresh vegetables, a month with can, uh, canned goods. So we... we shop every port like uh, where we go I go to the grocery store and buy what we need you know, uh, we have uh, up to 14 people that I feed uh, three meals a day and um, sometimes it's, it's difficult but I am the sole dictator so what you prepare that's what they have to eat right unless we have special needs like we have some people who are lactose tolerance and we might have a vegetarian. Any words of wisdom that you could get to anyone who would want to be an executive ship, uh, a chef on a ship? Uh, be prepared for a lot of different um, challenges. Sailing the boat, your kitchen moving, being um, sideways, turning over, rolling, splashing things around. So it's a moving thing. It, so when you come to work on a a schooner like this, we have to kind of learn all over again. Storytelling is an important way for a culture to preserve its history. We'll see how a local historian connects the history of the Amistad with Ashtabula County's Underground Railroad when the Amistad Ashtabula celebration continues. Ready. Ready. Event. 
Video. Corporate. Video. For over 100 years, Anderson & Sons has been the area's most trusted name in jewelry. Family owned and operated, Anderson & Sons offers an incredible selection of fine quality jewelry at a fair and honest price. You'll always find a unique variety of diamond and colored stone jewelry. Anderson & Sons also specializes in engagement rings to fit every budget. Select from their large in-stock inventory or they can custom design one just for her. For jewelry that makes a difference, remember Anderson & Sons Jewelers, downtown Ashtabula and Route 20 in Madison. learn about your history. You could read a book or perhaps research online. Sometimes the best way is the simple way, simply telling a story. As a part of the Amistad Eshtabula celebration, local historian and author Daisy Baskerville created a series of narrations about different periods of the Amistad and the corresponding history of the local Underground Railroad. Here's an excerpt. walking along a road in Sierra Leone. The captives had been taken to Lumbaco where they were herded onto the slave ship, Decor. In early summer, the Decor landed in Havana, Cuba. Jose Montez and Pedro Ruiz, two Spaniards, bought 53 of the Africans and herded them into the Amistad to be taken on a short voyage to the eastern end of the island. Ruiz and Montez did not chain them on board the Amistad. Later they would come to realize this was a terrible error in judgment. The cook terrorized the captives with gestures saying that he was going to kill them and they were going to be eaten. On the third night out, Sinke and another man found an object to pick the locks on their neck collars. They quickly freed the other captives. They found sugarcane knives from Lake Erie went. South. This new territory attracted many New Englanders who were highly religious and who believed in the abolition of slavery. What was known as the Connecticut Missionary Society had been organized by the New England Congregational Church. Reverend Joseph Badger organized the first Congregational Church in Austinburg in 1801. Reverend Giles Hooker Cowles from Farmington, Connecticut became the first settled minister in 1811. During this same time, Mr. Eliphalet Austin, born in Litchfield, Connecticut, moved to Austinburg. Mr. Austin became a landowner, entrepreneur, judge, and an agent on the Underground Railroad. The Asheville County citizens, mostly from Connecticut, quickly became part of a secret organization called the Underground Railroad. What was the Underground Railroad? 
It wasn't underground. It wasn't even a railroad. It was a system or network of homes abolitionists used to transport escaped slaves to the free states and Canada. It began before the Civil War and continued on In keeping with the theme of celebrating our historic freedom, an ecumenical church service featuring a 200-member community choir will be conducted from the schooner Amistad on Sunday. It'll be under the direction of Reverend Glenn Warner of the Second Congregational Church. It's significant because it is the Congregationalists of Connecticut who actually aided the captives of the Amistad in 1839. Now, what we've shown you is just a sampling of the dozens of educational activities that are a part of the Amistad Ashtabula celebration. There will also be Civil War reenactments, special exhibits, and concerts all weekend long. We hope you've enjoyed our special report, Amistad Ashtabula, a celebration of freedom. On behalf of the entire ACN staff, I'm Eleanor Hayes. Thank you for watching. We leave you now with another look at the majestic beauty of the Freedom Schooner Amistad. I think it's great that it's come to Ashtabula. Um, it's great for the economy and the, um, you know, showing off our city. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great for um, kids and stuff to know about the history. It's an outstanding event because it's a, a, a time of bringing people together of different races and different creeds, different beliefs. Uh, this is a, a fantastic opportunity for Ashtabula County to uh, be able to look at our problems here and see what was on this ship and how they can affect us. I think it's great because each person should know about the other's history and it makes us be more lovable people when we know about each other. Yeah, I just think it's a wonderful occasion. It's good to have the people down here, you know, just to see the area kind of uh, Enliven a little bit, especially at the end of summer. Things seem to close up pretty seriously. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing people down here and having a good time. It's turning into a virtual world where everyone's just sitting and looking at boxes and stuff. Might as well come down and, and feel a real schooner, you know?